I just got my Wim hearse and I'm about to take it apart and I want to show you the setup guide on how easy this is to take out and get going. Okay, the first thing that I noticed is that this is packed really, really well. I've got lots of air cushioning and the foam is all held together by this tape. So what I'm going to do is just pick this whole thing up, just get the box out of the way here, and then just cut all this strapping. Okay, gently take these off. I would save those for later, so in case you want to store this, you know it's going to be stored nice and safe. Okay, everything is segmented so it goes together and comes apart very easily. And there you go. It's pretty much all in one piece. Let's show you the next part for setting up and getting this thing running. Okay, so I just took this out of the box, and the main thing to know is these may not be down, but you have to put these charging arms down. They need to make contact or else you're not going to accumulate any charge. The discharge wands, I always start out just a, a couple millimeters apart, just to be safe for the first run. The other thing to take note of is the charging arms. There's a pair on one side, there's a perpendicular pair on the other side. These need to be touching the disc as they spin. So you got to make sure they're touching the discs. And more importantly, when one set of arms are touching the metal foils, let me turn this around. The ones on the other side should be between the metal foils. So you want this alternating charge. So I'm just going to, you can move this around. So while one side is touching, the other side has to be between to make sure these brushes are actually touching the disc. Okay, let me turn this back around. Okay, so now that while one side is touching the metal foils, the other side is in between them. The charging arms are down. I have the discharge about two millimeters apart. Let's give this a little run. I'm already here in clicks. Let's see if I can get something bigger here. There we go. And when we're done, discharge them, make sure they touch. And if you're gonna put this away, I would put these charging arms up. So if a student turns this, there is not gonna be any charge being accumulated. Some troubleshooting tips. If you're not getting a good charge, here's a couple things to check. Make sure these charging bars are down. Start out with these discharge rods, not far apart, but very, very close together, about one to two millimeters. Make sure the equilibrium bars are set so they're touching. One side is on the metal foils. The ones on the opposite side are between metal foils. The stirrups, the ones that collect the charge, they can be touching or very, very near. Okay, then when you turn this, you should be able to get a charge. If you're still having trouble, like any electrostatic device, dirt, dust, oils from your hands will not make a charge be produced. So just use rubbing alcohol on the Q-tip and then just clean gently all the metal foils, clean the brushes, just getting all the dust and dirt and grime off of it and then try it again.